Yeah. As, you know, coming off the, uh, the Oregon game, we were disappointed that we didn't execute well enough to give ourselves a chance to win the game and, you know, got back in the early morning hours and our guys are tired and we need to get them back. So we need to get uh, into our preparation for Monmouth and there'll be a there'll be a great challenge. They've got a uh, uh, a good veteran team with uh, uh, four senior starters and a junior starting on their offensive line. The preseason uh, player of the year at quarterback and a first team all conference running back player. So um, you know we we feel like we need our. It's a huge game for us. We need our crowd to be here and be ready to go and try to be disruptive because this is a, a really, really quality opponent who's been in the playoffs the last two years or two years ago, 2017, they were in the playoffs, did not make it last year like us. So we've got our hands full with these guys. Um, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with uh, uh, with their quarterback, Kenji Behar. He's, he's a really, really good player. He's smooth. He's got a big arm. Um, he, he's impressive. Um, they've got some good players on defense. The um, defensive end's a, a good pass rusher. Um, they've got uh, uh, one of their DBs, Barry, is a first team all conference player. So we just uh, we've got our hands full with these guys. about a team like them that maybe there aren't any like opponents or anything and it's kind of like a brand new scout team for you. Well, it's one of the things with with the playoffs, Derek, is it, it is a challenge. Let me backtrack for you. Actually answer your question rather than pontificating. But uh, it is a challenge because we don't have a whole bunch of crossover, you know. But we do know of uh, – some of the teams they've played the last couple of years and we've seen them on film. So we have a little bit of gauge there. Um, but these intersectional games are big when you've got a, a playoff system. And so for us, this is, it, this is a huge game in that regard. Most years there's only three non-conference games. You've been a fourth one this year. What do you think of just the prospect of having a fourth non-conference? I mean, what does it do to make it? it? generates revenue. You sell tickets. Um, you know, I don't really treat any games as tune-ups, so I, that's kind of, I mean, I don't want to just sit here and go, no, that's a dumb question, but, because it's not, it's relevant, but, um, you know, we don't ever treat a game like a tune-up, so they all count, they all matter, um, kind of goes back to that, uh, that playoff Statement I made a second ago. These are these things have implications. Yeah, it's you know, it, it, um, Guerrero is a good player, you know, and so when you've got a kid like that that's as durable as he is, then you you give it to him. Um, I always kind of feel like, and this goes back to the the previous question just a second ago, which was longer season, all that. You know, we're always somewhat reticent early in the year to give the guy the ball that much because we want to make sure we have him. But you got to do what you got to do to win on any given Saturday. So they're feeding him the ball. He's uh, running well behind that big veteran offensive line. And, I mean, I can see why. They're scoring the points they are, why they're rushing for as many yards as they do, and and why his numbers are what they are. Coach, with Jerry sitting here beside you, what what have you enjoyed about coaching him these last couple of years? <laughs> uh, you know, there's lots of things that are fun about coaching Jerry. Um, he, he's he's uh, exciting to watch play. Uh, what you all don't see is how hard he works. Uh, in in the weight room and on the practice field, um, but the thing that, that uh, um, I've appreciated probably most about him is how much he's improved his practice habits and how much he's improved his game in turn in terms of the uh, 
the broad sense. It's not just punt returning and catching the uh, the bubble screen. He's he's become a way more uh, complete football player. He's he's bigger and stronger. I, th I think he's faster, and uh, just the the work he's put in has made him an even better player. Yeah, it seems to be the year where we're we're playing senior quarterbacks and veteran O lines. I mean, that's been the case every week, and that that makes it hard. You know, it's it's difficult because you know you, if you get a if you get a rookie O line or a rookie quarterback, uh, they're easier to to manipulate to a degree. And guys that have this much experience are hard to you don't fool them much, and they're composed and. They don't let bad plays bother them. And so, you know, it's just a matter of having your hands full every week when you have guys with that kind of experience. Somebody was going to ask this question sooner or later, but Jerry, you got the record for uh, you know, most career receptions as a Grizzly. I know you say you don't really pay attention to records or anything like that. You just care about winning. But what does that mean to you to be at the very top alone by yourself? Well, um, you know, it's pretty cool coming here as a walk-on, you know, uh, getting my – shot and just hoping I'd be able to, you know, to get some snaps or, you know, be able to help the team the best I can. But, you know, uh, being able to have my name in a place like this that has some pretty awesome historical, uh, you know, Mon Montana football, you know, living in Coeur d'Alene, you know about this place, the standards and, you know, what it holds and, uh, you know, it was pretty tough catching all those bubbles the first two years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty blessed, and it's, it's, I'm, on, I'm honored to be able to have my name up there, and um, I'm excited to get going on the, this next game. Just like I said, I'm, I'm here to do what I can for the team and uh, put us in the best situation to win. And whatever the coach coaches ask me uh, or what they want from me, you know, I'll do the best I can. So I know it's a, uh, it's pretty cool, but you know, just doing what I can. Do you have one moment or maybe even one catch that kind of sticks out over the past, you know, couple years? Um. Well, I just got a, a lot of bubbles. So <laughs> that one account Paul was pretty good. Yeah. I got to see yeah. that one live. Um, you know, not not too many. I I, I couldn't good. tell you. Um, I think just the guys who I play with and the coaches. You know, we all have. It's a pretty positive atmosphere, and you know, um, we. Try to get better every day, and that's the that's the goal. Just get better every day. That game was it was tough. I mean, you're playing the 15th best team in the nation. What did you and your players learn about the team after that game? Um, I'd say what we learned about us is, um, you know, we're we're gonna come out and we're gonna play hard against and give our best against no matter who it is. You know, if it's Oregon, if it's Monmouth, we're we're gonna come out and you know play Montana football, so uh, that's uh, that's what I got out of it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And Claire.